Please let me welcome the director of the film, Len, Len Kahn. And someone who needs no introduction, please welcome Kieran Carringer. Len, congratulations. Thank I you. hope you win every award there is available for this film. It was so well done and had more twists and turns than a soap opera. <laughs> I was laughing, I was crying. First, tell me about your mission when you were creating this film. What did you want the audience to receive from it? Um, that's a big question. <laughs> I think the main thing is, as uh, uh, Danny said earlier, basically, it's, uh, you know, these guys can act. Yeah. They can, they, uh, you know, Kieran is a very special actor. He's a very special person. Uh, and uh, when, the, when the play that it's based on was originally conceived by Petal Pilly at Blue Teapot Theatre Company, um, it was actually illegal in Ireland. Wow for uh, people with intellectual disabilities to sleep with each other. That law was repealed oh, because of our... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> because of that play and our film and the work of people in Ireland to get it repealed, it was repealed wow. one week ago. Wow! Wow! That is great. But it's not, it's not fully... That was one part of the mission. It's not, it, I, I don't know the wording of the repeal yet. Um, but it, but it is. There's more work to be done. But effectively, uh, you know, I just wanted to get it out there, the story. Because when I saw the play, I knew it had to be a film. Yeah. And um, I'd worked with the guys before, and knew their talent. And it was just a question of transferring it from the stage to the screen. So that that was a mission to just basically preserve their performances forever. And, um, and, and to show the world I I exactly how they are. And, you know, I, I think most people who um, sort of see the guy in McDonald's putting out the balloons or uh, people on the bus or whatever it might be, those kind of derogatory phrases, that if that's their only connection with, to people who have uh, disabilities, then, you know, they, uh, they're going to be really surprised by this film. And that's why I wanted to make it a commercial, funny film that, uh, that is accessible to everyone. Yeah, well, <laughs> job well done, job well done. Kieran, how did it feel making this film and what was it like? How long did you film? Talk to me about the process. Basically, uh, for basically uh, long days from yeah. the evening. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and what did you think when you saw the final product? Were you pleased? I was amazed, it seems yeah. like on the screen. It looked a lot different with me, not on it. For change, I mean. Yeah. Do you keep in touch with your fellow cast members? Yes, I work with them. Uh, I work with them regularly in Galway, anyway. That's awesome. And you know, it was very emotional for me because it taught me a lot. And I guess that's what make that's the ultimate goal of a film to be a teacher as well. And I don't think most people in this audience knew. Did anyone here know that it was illegal? For, yeah, so this did a great public service. And how do you feel now that that law has been repealed? It makes me, it makes me feel really good about the law being changed because I feel a lot stronger about how I feel now than I was then. Yeah, that's great, that's great, that's great. We're going to open up the floor for some questions and we have a mic, but before we get to that, Len, I do want to ask you, you also touched on some tough, tough topics in this, like uh, women who are raped. 
uh, who, who yes. have disabilities. And I thought that was very courageous of you to broach that topic. Um, the topic came from what I should say about the development of the piece and um, both in its play form and uh, in its scripted form for the film was we worked very closely with the guys in, at Blue Teapot Theatre Company and the stories kind of came from them yeah. in many ways and uh, it, was, it was something that they felt strongly about. Yeah. Um, it has happened in the past, the cases have been recorded. Yeah. But what I found is that um, the attitudes towards that, the, the, any adversity that uh, uh, Charlene's mother died, for example, right. She, she might uh, get very upset about that one moment and then the next minute would turn because it's kind of dealt with. And, and we use that within, within the film itself, her ability to actually just sort of change subject and, and get over it, really. And I think that's a lesson for us all. You know, it's, it, awful things can happen in the world, like the election of a certain president. <laughs> but we'll get over it, we'll survive. Um, and... Um, and, and, and so I think we didn't want to shirk away from those difficult questions, but we wanted to, to say that they were there, yeah. um, but at the same time, entertain you. Yeah. How was it directing all of the actors? Uh, at times, mayhem. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that there were times when we were waiting to set up certain scenes, like the scene of them getting on the bus, and I'm running up and down, and it was a really cold day, and I'm trying to keep <laughs> everyone happy while they're laying out the tracks. Um, and uh, sometimes Kieran, um, Kieran falls asleep on buses, don't you? Only once. <laughs> <laughs> the once that it mattered. But no, uh, but Kieran is uh, absolutely astounding. Uh, uh, Danny mentioned something earlier about uh, cognitive disabilities and, you know, Hollywood execs thinking, well, you can't learn lines and all the rest of it. I think Kieran had a few lines in that film, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He had a few. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and he never forgot them. And actually, after the screenings, usually after a screening, we have a car journey. We had um, four showings in Ireland last week. And every car journey on the way home with Charlene and Kieran in the car, they did the whole film again. <laughs> the whole film. Everyone's parts. Yeah. Didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to do Charlene's part now? Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be you. You be Charlene. You ready? Okay. <laughs> do, we, do we have any questions or comments from the audience? I got two questions for the director. Um, one of them, is it based in reality? Uh, some of it is, yes. It's, it's certainly based on the stories told to us by the Blue Tea Podcast members. And um, how did um, the character of Tom find those people? Sorry, how did the character of Tom find those people? Yeah. Um, uh, do, do you mean in terms of how he feels about them? Yes. Yes, I, I, I think that uh, the character of Tom is an interesting carer mm -hmm. because uh, I, I think he's in the job for the money. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I think what's interesting about his attitude is he just treats them like he treats everyone else. Yeah. Right. And that's what I, I, I love about him, you know, calling them fuckers and fuck, yeah. fuck, yeah. fuck, <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> which I should explain for the, an American audience. Swearing in Ireland is kind of just normal. <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of, yeah... And uh, the second question for the director, um, in what group home were these kids were in? Uh, the, well, um, Kieran's character uh, wasn't in a group home. Mm -hmm. Charlene's character was, and she is in a group home in real life, okay. as is Patrick, as is, I think Ema is as well, isn't she, who plays uh, yeah, Sandy? Yeah. Yes, so um, it's a mixture, the, the actors, uh, that, it's an interesting qu question, Lauren, because it also uh, gave us issues when we were filming in terms of we had to alert carers. Car mm -hmm. We couldn't have done the job without carers. We had carers on set as well. Um, we had very strict rules about having people both in the green room and on set mm -hmm. if anyone ever got upset or anything going wrong. But it went very, very smoothly. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes people, because they had to 
be got up by their carers. Right. Had very early starts, four o'clock in the morning sometimes, three o'clock in the morning. You know this because you, you've right. done plenty of it. <laughs> but, um, but that yes, that, that's kind of the setup that we had and we wanted to reflect that also in the film. Okay. Um, the reason why I'm asking because I used to live in a group home in Laguna Beach. That's what um, we usually do that kind of stuff. Mm. And I have a question for the actor, Larry. Um, how does it feel when you saw um, that um, girl named Alice when she had a stroke? Because I have a friend who had a stroke too. Her name's, her name's uh, Valerie, and I work with her in Galway. She's a nice girl, very nice, very pleasant. She lives out in the country in Quackwell, so it's very hard for her to get in from mm -hmm. Quackwell. It's really hard for you. Not for me, not for me, not for, me but for her. I'm so sorry. Thank so you. Right. She has the same disability as me, Down syndrome as well. Hi, guys. Hi. Fantastic, fantastic job. And I'm sure you memorized your lines way better than I did at any occasion. And I've been on enough sets to know that it's hard to wrangle just about everybody uh, for any given scene. Indeed. Um, but um, I, I just wanted to say uh, that I really appreciated uh, when, other, when other characters met the people from the home, I, you know, my gut feeling was to worry on some level, like what would their reactions be? And you always surprised me with the way people responded. Um, I really appreciated that it wasn't typical, that there was a lot of sort of exploration before understanding, and that it, there, was, there was no judgment. You thought the judgment was coming, but then it didn't come, and then you saw that there was this sort of inclusive moment that would occur with each of the people that went on their journeys outside of the cinema. So I just wanted to say I appreciated that very atypical choice um, from my perspective. Yeah. That's Thank great, you. Great comment. And Danny, did you find the portrayals authentic as you made the comment? You, you talked about I, I don't know that they could get more authentic than that. <laughs> I really don't. That's great. We have someone right here in the red. Yeah, hi. I was just wondering, the roles that people played, they played them very, very well. How did you decide, first of all, how many people you were going to look for in group homes and how many not? And where did you really go looking for the characters for this film? Well, well that's quite simple because um, eff effectively they are all Blue Teapot cast members and uh, they were all in the play sanctuary. And, and the, uh, the way the play was devised by the same writer who's done our screenplay here, Christian O'Reilly, uh, w was that uh, all the characters were worked on with the actors, workshopped and written for the actors. So we knew who we had to start with. The only person who wasn't in the play was uh, the character of Rita, played by Jenny Cox. So we, we added that in uh, so that we could explore more of Galway and also just simply because we wanted to be inclusive because Jenny had joined the company after the play had originally been commissioned. So um, even uh, the character of Tom, the carer, he had been in the play as well, which toured around Dublin and Ireland. And wh where else did you go? Limerick and places? Basically all over Galway, really. Yeah, all and all, all over Galway. Galway all around yes. Galway, really. So, so uh, th that, that was never an issue for us, the casting. We, we knew. And I've worked with the guys for about um, four years before we made the film, didn't I? Yes, you did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Laureen Arbus. We'll take a great one last question here. Great to see her here. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Good evening. This was an amazing film. Thank you so much, and huge congratulations to you. One of the, I'm a producer and writer, and one of the great resistances I get all the time from Hollywood is how much more it will cost to use people with disability. Can you speak to the budget and any considerations, plus or negative in that regard? Thank you. Yeah, um, actually it's quite an interesting story with the, with the finances. The film was made for, the, the real figure for the film was uh, half a million euro. So 500,000, about, I suppose about maybe say $600,000. Um, initially we applied to the Irish Film Board for a scheme called Catalyst, which was a low budget filmmaking scheme that was going to award 350,000 euro to make a film. And we thought we could do it for that. And uh, we got shortlisted for that scheme. 
Uh, but the film board actually said to us, we, th we thought it was a bit of a kiss off because they said, uh, we think you need more money. So we thought that was the nicest kind of goodbye that we, that we ever had. But they, they were genuine. And uh, we were able to apply to them for money, apply to the BAI for money, and through tax break section 481, uh, we got some tax relief in there as well, which help us, helped us to make the film. So that was budget. Um, we shot for five weeks um, uh, with Christmas in between, the two-week period of Christmas in between, six-day shoots. So it's a 30-day shoot overall. Uh, 11 hours shooting days. Uh, that was starting with um, hair and makeup and going through uh, to 11 hours for the shoot. So we'd probably shoot maybe 10 hours maximum, nine hours. Um, we would try to split the cast into days so that we would have maybe Kieran and Charlene in the morning and maybe um, uh, Val and Patrick sort of in the afternoon or mix it up so that they always got lots of breaks. Um, in terms of... I, I workshopped with you guys quite a bit beforehand as well, didn't yes, we? Yes, you so, did. So, yes. But the one thing I did want to do was I didn't want to rehearse them too much beforehand because one of the problems uh, w working with the guys in terms of the way you learn your lines mm -hmm. is you, that they, they quite often will learn them, or, or not you, but um, actually Charlene would do it, wouldn't she, where she'd be yeah. a little bit sing-songy. So w what, what happens is it's like learning lines like a lyrics to a song. And once you've got that song in your head, if you hear someone else do a note slightly different, it's, it's very difficult. So I didn't want them to learn it too uh, um, uh, off by rote, as Shakespeare would say. Um, so that meant it was always very fresh on set. But it was a little bit dangerous because sometimes it meant you might work a little bit longer to get the particular scene. But I only ever had to reshoot one scene, and I'm not going to tell you which one that was. <laughs> Okay, well, last question for you, and then we're going to wrap it up. The soundtrack, it's ringing in my head. Talk to me about that soundtrack. Uh, well, we're, we're very lucky on two counts with the soundtrack. Um, that there's, uh, we had a wonderful composer, Joe Conlon, who actually is an American. Oh. So uh, he's worked on all my short films wow. with me, and he, works, um, he lives in Seattle now, but he uh, was working out of L.A. at the time. Uh, but the selection of songs, yeah. the uh, Violent Femmes, uh, that was something that um, was always in my head to do. Uh -huh. I always wanted a, 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 an aggressive soundtrack, if you like. And um, our musical supervisor, I gave him all these lists of songs that I wanted, like the, the, the Spanish rap yeah. song, which is, um, uh, oh, I've forgotten his name now, but, uh, but he's Puerto Rican. Um, and, and I just wanted songs with attitude, and I wanted to well, mix you them up. You had attitude, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you, you nailed it. What, what, what happened that was a good kind of production tip was um, the, the song, uh, the Chumbawamba song, I Get Knocked Down But I Get Up <laughs> right, Again, right. Tub Thumping. Right. Uh, that song, um, I knew one of the band members, oh, okay. so they gave us the song for free. But nice. my wonderful music supervisor said to me, because I think it was Sony Music that owned the rights, he said, look, let's ask them to pay, the, you know, we'll pay them something, we'll pay them a grand. Okay. So we got all the other songs for about the same money. Oh, nice. So it was a brilliant strategy, which meant that, you know, because he could turn around and say, we got this number one song and we got it for this price, will you do the same thing? Right. So, um, you know, for all the songs that were in it, I think our song budget was 50,000 which actually, anyone who knows, that's yeah. really dirt cheap. You'd get maybe one song yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that was the, the music. Thank you for noticing. Yes, of <laughs> course. How could you not? Ladies and gentlemen, the cast of Sanctuary. Amazing. Thank you. Cheryl, thank you. You're amazing. Um, Kieran, thank you so much for being here. Thank Len. you so much. Thank you for this fantastic film. Folks, we have a whole uh, week of amazing films. Please help us spread the word. We really need your help here. Um, join us upstairs for a um, uh, beautiful reception and continue the conversation up there. Thank you.